Hello and welcome to chapter 22 of the video tutorial how to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. Without further delay, we had stopped after putting our products and adding a pagination, etc. There is a different type of pagination, which is the one in Google. One, two, three, four, five, next. If you want, we can watch it later on because by now with this we have a simple pagination we can use with the products and, and it's quite handy. Okay, next thing we will do, and it's probably the most delicate things to do in the page, is the purchase button as such, which is um, what happens when somebody hits the purchase button. To begin with, uh, we don't even have a purchase button, which is what we will create now, right? Initially, only those people who have gone through the registration process will be able to purchase. If that's right for you, it would be interesting doing it also who haven't registered yet you know in many pages you can shop around and when you come to the checkout it asks you for your user and password to simplify it and to start at once with this which is slightly complicated we will make it so that only registered clients can use it i mean those who have already registered to do it here in the page of the product watch product php we will create the button or, or the link to purchase this product so we go to watch product and right here you see I still have the previous page open I will add not a button but a link it can be done with both that will say buy product the thing is that this link will only appear to those who have registered and logged in the page if you remember when I log in as a, as a user <coughs> user access I think it was around here right here in in the global variables sorry session variables I got the values assigned the MMID user was here and I stored the user ID and if I'm not wrong in access okay no where was it I don't know if we have done this or else I will do it on the run. I'm gonna pick this variable here and in the page watch product I will do as follows. I will tell it if there is something in that value I mean if it appears and there is something in this value give me the buy product option. If it doesn't offer me to register the typical thing. So I make here a PHP very easy it even provides me with a if. If I page this thing I head around is set is a function that will tell me if it's defined now you will see why is this ampersand different from for example as no user zero so different from zero I won't explain this because I understand that making a comparison I mean you can handle a conditional in PHP I will correct the brackets so that this works properly one here and another here you know they has to go between brackets so we complete these ones okay I think that's right by now <coughs> if the user session is set um, sort to say it's placed and in addition it hasn't got a zero value then we will take for granted that this person has logged in in that case we open square brackets uh, we would see the byproduct thing close square brackets we put it as PHP code oops sorry it's not echo okay we already have what will happen if the user is registered let's save and check what happens as you can see nothing happens because still I'm not a registered user and I've just remembered what was it you have this in the left menu if you want we can have a quick view on it and it won't be an extra if we write it as well it was it was in catalog it was here you remember we did it and as you see it says exactly the same I've just written well here I'm writing the username but it's the same because both username and ID user are defined you see both username and ID user have values as we're going to carry out the purchase I prefer to guide myself by the ID user than by the username in this case it would be the email right once this topic is clear we add an else which is and if I'm not registered what will happen I close the square brackets here and I put everything in PHP as well 
and we'll say you need to be registered to buy it's free and here cunningly we will create a link to the page user register we've got here user register fine let's save and check what happens you see as I haven't registered or logged in I get this you need to be registered to buy it free then I would enter my date and register as I'm already registered user I will log in hopefully I will remember my password I think it was triple X oops no it wasn't well uh, as we haven't got the recover your password stuff yet I will play a trick and check my database to check which password I use because I, I don't remember so so we go to shoes user and um, oh great I didn't even have that user because I made it up so I, I will use this user and the password will be 4x later we will make these passwords here to be secret even to the administrator bear in mind that passwords cannot be recovered uh, depending on the country you are uh, and you can store them like this or codified we will see that uh, later on okay by now I will take this <coughs> we already have the user I had completely forgotten about it here we are and password was for X so I can log in now hello Jorge Pepe boots we'll go to the Wellingtons and I can already watch the byproduct text which is right what I wanted it hasn't got a link yet but as I am registering the page I get the text this is a very simple code it just says that if the session variable MMID user has been assigned and has a value different from zero then I will obtain byproduct next thing I, we will be making a link from byproduct to I like doing it there are many ways of doing this I don't even figure out how many but in the end I think the most practical is making a page that inserts the product in your shopping trolley so we will make a link from byproduct to a site that is called um, trolley add PHP what are we sending here we're going to send the ID of the product we're watching right now so I tell it question mark record ID I have explained this a lot of times and we will pass it the ID product now I'm going to save I update here and you see now this works and it will take me to the page trolley ad which obviously doesn't exist yet next thing we will do we have to create a, a new table with with the trolley contents so we are here in Navicat. You can do this with Navicat or with PHP My Admin or with the software you have to manage databases. Uh, let's make a new table which will contain the following fields. Let's make an int counter. I like it to be the main variable, I, I mean the main the main fields to auto increment and set. We already explained what it is what is this for and allow null autonomeric. The next thing will be uh, identifying the user who is filling his trolley. ID user. Integer. Integer type as well. The product he's buying. An, an integer type as well. Let's add some new variables such as the amount. Int. And I think now, more or less, we have the basics. Now this table will be related to the user and to the product and will be assigned an amount. There is one further field I won't explain now, but probably you will deduce it, it, its function because of its name. It will be called int purchase OK. I will give a brief description and we will analyze it later on. This field, whose default will be initially zero, will decide will 
will decide uh, take take into account that in the table trolley I will be storing the users on the and their trolleys. I mean the the users and, and the products they have included in their trolleys. In some way, I have to know if a user has bought that product or not. With purchase, okay. In some way, I am informing the database uh, when when in the purchase, okay, field I have a zero. It's because that product is still in the trolley, okay. Once the purchase is over and the customer confirms the order, decides the means of payment, the delivery, and I have the delivery address, then we will create the process so that whenever it says zero, it will say one. In that case, it will automatically move to historic, okay. Um, I like also including a field which is ID purchase so that so that well I think we'd rather leave this alone not to complicate things even more and later we will add more things I save name it TBL trolley absolutely clear and there it is it's an empty table obviously there is nothing in there and now we get back to our to our and here what happens when we hit buy product? In that moment, what we want it to do is that, obviously, the system puts this product into the trolley. Then we will have the typical budget page where we can see the products we've got, their picture, how many units, we can calculate the totals, etc. So, we will create a page that will be called trolley add. And I'm going to do the usual thing. I take index and copy it, then rename to trolley IDD. Okay. And this will be called, although it won't be available for the public, you will understand why. Add product. We're gonna type it right. And here, add. Fine. Here we want to use an insert sentence of SQL. So if we are a little cunning, we will remember that in admin, when we insert a category, we made an insert sentence. So we will open this one as an example, because I don't remember how it's written, and I will copy from here, and that's it. I will copy all this part, which is the code it put upside. I copy, close, and paste it the first line of trolley add. I've got enough text, although it isn't what I'm looking for, but we will look for it later. Remember that as I copy from admin, the connection to choose connection has to be like this without going to the previous folder because trolley add is in the root of our web. Well, next thing it's telling me if the mm insert is working and it's form one, then you perform the function. Well, I'm going to delete all this because I'm not coming from any function, sorry, any form. I delete it and I will delete this as well. Right, now we have to tell it insert into table trolley. Uh, what fields will I use with a trolley? Let's check the user ID, copy paste, the product ID, copy paste, the amount. Well, if you want, we can make amount a default field and and we will add it that it's uh, we can do it now but we will make it anyway amount with values how many values there are three remember this is to there we are the three values and here we will put these three values I will copy paste these three times first the user ID the ID user remember was here so I copy and I will paste it here. This is not a text but an integer. Next thing is the product as such. I pass the product via parameter. You remember before I will put here some commas so that we make it right, correct. The product that would match this one would match this one too. The get SQL value string is a function you've got up here that basically formats the variable so that it enters properly in the database. The product ID, uh, where do we have the product ID? We are passing it in watch product, right? And it's the parameter record ID we've got here. Um, this would be get instead of post because I'm passing it via parameter and instead here record ID. And the amount we will say one because initially we will only buy one. I won't pass the get SQL value string function because it's already correct.
Here the next thing we will do is going to the page of our invoice or our trolley. So we will go to the page trolley list. And this will take us straight there. That's why I was telling you that this will be kind of private because with this headed headed here it will jump automatically to trolley list as soon as I make the insert. What will happen now? Well, I will hit buy product, I, it will open the page trolley a day and automatically after the insertion it will open trolley list. I haven't created this page yet, I will make it up in a moment although it doesn't do anything by now. Not to give me an error. Trolley list, PHP and I will write here bravo and down here insert it. We save and if everything has been okay fine perfect let's check that our product has really really entered our database let's go to trolley and you see the counter is an autonomic the user is the user id number two the product i've purchased is the identificator one amount one and purchase okay zero and well as i know this chapter is a little long and complex let's stop here and we will continue in the next chapter extracting the data for our invoice right I hope it hasn't been too complicated, I've been very fast, I know, but I understand you're most experts in this, so we don't need to go much in depth with this, but if necessary, let me know. So, see you in chapter 23, regards.